Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with Mr. Greg Dickerson. And if you haven't been watching Greg for a while now, you are missing out because he was a home builder. He built luxury stuff. He's built first-time home buyer stuff. He is my home builder expert on the channel. Let's welcome him. How you doing, buddy? Doing great, Michael. Good to see you. And again, I've got to apologize to everybody. I'm still dealing with COVID, so my voice is kind of in and out, but I'm getting through it. There you go. Hey, uh, I want to talk about home builders because it, there are a lot of, um, I don't know, kind of newbie real estate investors and channels talking about home builders going bankrupt, growing out of business, record record numbers of inventory. And you and I have talked about, it's like, Michael, home builders are much smarter, more efficient, much more controlled the last time. You actually said, uh, I believe, uh, and I agreed with you that home builders would just pivot to build for rent. And sure enough, CEO, CFO of Havnanian, a publicly traded home builder, said in their earnings announcements that they're already starting to pivot. They have four cell communities that they are now taking streets and turning them in for rent for the sole purpose of ultimately selling those as build to rent to hedge funds, private equity, insurance. So again, all these people pointing at the new home inventory don't understand that that inventory could disappear with a couple of pen strokes. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a builders are way smarter than they were the last time around and understand market dynamics. So first, a lot of these guys are national. So they're yes. averaging their housing stock. So they'll just discount and get rid of stuff first. That's their first step is liquidate. Yeah. They start reaching a point to where they can't do that and at least break even. Uh, then yeah, that's one of the options they have is to you know, pivot to build to rent and <clears throat> package, you know, get renters in place, package those things up, sell them as is on CO to other companies yeah. that are that are doing that. So they have a lot more exit options you know, then uh, most other people have available to them. And even still, most of them can still discount now and still get out and break even mm -hmm. with with most of these homes in most areas. And and there's not enough. I mean, there just isn't enough in the pipeline to make a difference. I mean, we're down over a million units in inventory right now, just in housing in general. So if every builder all of a sudden threw every house on the market at the same time, they would get absorbed uh, right now because there still isn't a lot to choose from. But they are seeing, you know, cancellations, pullbacks, yeah. zero traffic as the rates have gone up. So as they drop prices, inventory sells. But uh, the other thing is there's huge record demand for rental, rental housing right now, especially single family rental, because a lot of people don't want to buy. Exactly. Uh, it's unaffordable. And, <laughs> right. And then there are some people that are selling and going into rentals. So absolutely, there's this, there's still a big demand there. And that whole market is shifting, uh, it, you know, as we know it. I mean, that's been a thing for a long time. There's been a lot of people that have had a build or rent model forever. I mean, nothing's new in real estate, right? But not at scale. Mm -hmm. not at the institutional level like we're seeing now. So I think you're going to see more and more of that Absolutely. as there's more and more demand and there's lack of inventory out there for institutions. I mean, there's a lot of capital looking for good places to go right now. And housing has always been one of the top places, you know, safety plays. That's why rates uh, are based on those treasuries because the investors are looking at treasuries, no risk versus, yep. you know, real assets, real risk, like yeah. you know, housing yeah. uh, for, for that to go. Yeah, there's a couple of things that are that um, if you're not in in the weeds and understand that you could look at and scream fire, fire, fire. And one of them is uh, new homes. If you looked at the last new home numbers, which I think came out two weeks ago, uh, there's 10.9 months of supply. Which as a headline number is scary. But <laughs> this is comical. If you actually take the time to read the articles, Greg. 91% of the inventory is either not started or in process. So we have 9% finished goods. And as you've said, builders, like if, if they, they had a home in contract and the buyer walks, they will discount it, move it off the books, replenish cash flow, and they are slowing down. So it would not shock me if new inventory breaks 12 months. But folks, it's not finished product. Yeah, the housing crash bros are funny. And, uh, you know, the, the the shock YouTubers, you know, record inventory levels up 300% in yeah. Arizona. Well, what was the inventory level? 100? <laughs> so yeah. now you got 300, so that's 300. You know what I mean? So the record, the le inventory was so low that these numbers of percentages of increases in numbers of inventory are going to look big. Um, you know, price discounts, prices are dropping 30%, 40%. Well, they were 20 to 30% 
forty percent overpriced to begin with, mm. behind what the last you know comparable sales were. So these things are negligible. What you need to look at is where was it pre-pandemic, mm -hmm. you know, compared to now, inventory levels, things like that. We're still, when you look at inventory nationwide, we're still at record low inventory levels, and uh, you know it's going down. It's not going up. You know, so uh, there's going to be markets. There's going to be areas and markets. Sure. You know, when you say when you say Las Vegas, well, I mean, it's not the entire state. It's certain cities certain yeah. or, you know, certain areas of, of well, we say Las Vegas, there's probably even areas in Las Vegas. That sure. are, some are doing well, some aren't, uh, you know, Nevada, Arizona. Um, yeah, there'll know, be some markets, no question. Austin, Texas, you know, same thing yeah. uh, where you're seeing inventory levels rise and, and, you know, the housing market correct, you know, mm -hmm. more rapidly than other areas, but it's still you got to look where did it come from and kind of compare it to that. So, yeah. but as far as home builders go and their inventory levels, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people that are, you know, just stopping at slab and they just, yeah. you know, a lot of the builders have just stopped. Yeah. They just, just put, they put wait. in the concrete and they're going to wait. Right. And, and that, and just so you know, folks, that slab counts as inventory. It's part of that 10.9 months of record supply. It's not a home. It's a freaking, it's concrete. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And again, they're going to, they're going to work their way through it. They've been through yeah. this before. They know how to deal with it. They're well capitalized and you know, they are contracting and, you know, they're going to yeah. lay off and yeah, you know, of course gonna, they'll lay off. They're not going to, they're not going to build new, you know, uh, yeah. and they'll pivot to rent as much as they can where they can, but, yeah. uh, you know, they'll pace themselves and, yeah. uh, you know, you'll have some that'll go out of business and you know, ah. things like that, but it's not, Again, there is there's just not enough out there to even make a dent, even if they threw everything. I mean, we're five million units short in housing yeah. right now. So you know, you got a million two or a million five in the pipeline, that's nothing. Yeah. And again, ninety percent of that's you know, a lot of that is slab. So it's not ready to deliver. Yeah. It they shouldn't couldn't count. finish it in the next three to six months. Yeah, it shouldn't count. Uh the other thing that I don't know if you you've seen, I got this from John Burns Real Estate Consulting. It's a great follow on Twitter. Uh gross margins for builders are higher today than they've ever been. They're rough and tough, 29%. They've averaged most of their, uh, most of the last decade at 21. So again, it's gross, not net profit. Totally get it. But they have a lot of room they can cut and not go broke is the point. Exactly. They probably got 30% or more, you know, margin that they could eliminate. And again, they'll average it across multiple yeah. markets, you know, across the country um, where some are still selling well, others aren't. But the interesting thing about what you just said, when we talked about inflation before and, you know, how sticky and different this is this time, a lot of companies are like that. They're, they're doing more, making more money with less. Yes. So they've decreased supply because they're more profitable and that's going to continue. There's no incentive for the car manufacturers to you know yeah. boost up well, production yeah, when why? they're making more money on less. And that's the other thing. Automotive sales, you know, wow. new car uh, pricing is very sticky. That's not coming down rapidly. Used cars, you might see adjust a little bit, mm -hmm. but you know that's still a big problem out there. And automobile manufacturers are like, you know, why should we? Why should we ramp up to make less per vehicle? Yeah, exactly. Uh, why would I do that? Exactly. Yeah. Home builders are kind of going to be the same way. They're like, you know, as things change and correct and all that, they're going to do the same thing. They're, you know, they're in business to make money and yeah, you know, make the most profit per house that they can make, not to sell the most that they can and make a little bit. You know? Yeah, exactly. It's not a unit. It's not a unit count business. It's a profit business. And I guess the last thing about home builders is if 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 I was in the market for buying a new home. I think the the time to get a deal is between now and maybe January, right? Use the slow months to your advantage because you can get a big discount. I've seen where right, Olivia and I uh, were in Southern California a couple of weeks ago, and we visited some housing tracks that we had seen earlier, and they're offering 50, 75K discounts to move in now. Um, so again, I think if you're looking for a new home and it is finished, I think you got four or five months to look for a deal. So two things, the best time to buy, uh, you know, from a builder, a new builder is before the end of the year, because everybody wants to clear the books for the end of the year, especially public okay. companies, because they've got their, you know, they want to clean everything up, get ready for, you know, uh, 2023 and lenders, lenders want to put the most money out the door mm -hmm. towards the end of the year. So if you're looking to borrow money, not necessarily mortgages, but commercial banks, you know, if you're okay. doing commercial development, you, know, you want to buy your, your multifamily asset, whatever it is. You can get really good deals from banks toward the end of the year because they're trying to put out that last little push for Q4 and finish the year strong, get their bonuses. Same thing with builders. Everybody's trying to hit that bonus at the end of the year. Got Same it. thing with market. That's why you always get the Santa Claus rally, right? Everybody's looking for that big bonus at the end of the year. So uh, just think about that. It could be a very good time to buy yeah. uh, a property from certain builders. You, know, you catch certain builders at certain times where all of a sudden they're just going to be like, let's just cut inventory. Let's get it off the books. And, yeah. 
get ready for, you know, Q1 2023. Yeah, I totally agree. I think there's going to be some opportunities out there if you're in the market. Um, again, what I'm telling everybody on my channel is we don't pay list price. We ask for closing cost credit and rate buy downs. Buyers have the power today. So use everything you can, right? Yeah. And I want to, you know, I want a new puppy and a new car <laughs> and a boat. And... <laughs> There you go. There you go. Well, Greg, do me a favor. You struggled through this. Thank you so much. I know you're getting over this. You did great. Where can people find you? Yeah. GregDickerson.com. That's where all my info is. Go check it out. All right. Thank you very much. Yes, sir.